Hey, Marlins fans, welcome to a new edition of Big Fish Small Pod for Tuesday, June 18th, here on the Fish on First podcast channel presented by MPT College Consulting. I'm Eli Sussman. As I do every Monday, usually, this is the Marlins Prospect Spotlight, touching on notable players from each full season affiliate of the Miami Marlins. Had a personal emergency on Monday that seems to have been resolved by now. So this got pushed back to Tuesday. I hope you guys still appreciate it as we cover some unheralded players across each level of the Marlins organization as we're nearing the halfway point of the minor league season. Starting off with Triple A Jacksonville, right-hander Kyle Tyler is in the spotlight for me. You saw a glimpse of him in the big leagues already, made one nondescript relief appearance for the Marlins. Otherwise, he's been with Jacksonville this entire year. Wasn't even in the rotation this entire season. He is right now due to some of the injuries they've had uh, across the Marlins organization. He's gotten that opportunity, and he's taken full advantage of it. Tyler is in the midst of a 23-inning scoreless streak with AAA Jacksonville. That's three consecutive scoreless starts, including the final four Endings of the start that came even before that to this point. It has lowered his season ERA below three in what is a relatively hitter friendly international league for Tyler. This is his first year in the Marlins organization. He was just a minor league free agent signing over the offseason. His stuff won't blow you away. The fastball averaging about 91 miles per hour, changeup at 87. He's got a slider, he's got a curveball, and he's not all that imposing on the mound either, listed at six feet tall what stood out is the extension that he gets off the mound in terms of where he actually delivers the ball relative to home plate despite being only six feet his extension is close to seven feet that's highly unusual and it makes the velocity play up a little more than you're actually seeing so far and not missing a whole lot of bats even during this streak he has about as many walks as strikeouts which is not a great sign overall and yet it's it's not harming his efficiency he just went seven innings in his most recent outing to this point. Um, The the key to his success has been preventing home runs. He's only allowed two of them this entire minor league season in 45 innings pitched. So let's see if that keeps up. Uh, I'm not going to blow this out of proportion. Uh, This is not entirely sustainable in my opinion. It's just that the Marlins are in a relatively desperate situation for starting pitching at this moment. They've avoided the rotation right now. Um, no matter what, t- due to the injuries of uh, Ryan Weathers most recently, Edward Cabrera still needs a couple more weeks to get stretched out. So I wouldn't be shocked to see Tyler get another opportunity at the big league level between now and the all-star break. Moving down to double-A Pensacola, this is a guy we've enjoyed covering the last few years, Paul McIntosh, longtime catcher in the Marlins organization, playing more left field this year than ever before. This is his third year in double-A. He did get a nice taste of AAA last year, but not all that successful. Got sent down. Now he's 26 years old in AA. Uh, pretty, it's a make or break year for him in this organization. And it got off to an awful start through the first, pretty deep into May, really across all of April and May. He was a well below average hitter down there in terms of both power and his hit tool. And that's what really was alarming for a guy that has already had success at the double-A level dating back to 2022. And then last year as well, he was about 20% above a league average hitter in the Southern League the previous two years. And now this year, he was well below league average entering June. He has caught fire recently, and it was only a matter of time. Slashing 432 batting average, 463 on base, 730 slugging during the month of June for Paul McIntosh. I mentioned that he'd been mostly a catcher prior to this season. He only had five minor league career games in left field before 2024. And this season alone, he has topped that total. He's basically splitting time now between catcher and left field, as we've covered on previous spotlights. Joe Mack is now up in double A and getting a lot of the catching reps there. So that's kind of, part of that is because of the acceptance that P Mac is at the next level, most likely going to be corner outfielder DH assuming that he gets to the next level at some point eventually. Um, now that he's like playing like himself, 
it would be a bummer if he spends the whole year in double A. I would expect him to get the bump up to Jacksonville, perhaps after the all-star break or after the trade deadline at the very latest. It'd be nice to see him get a chance for, for somebody that has such great batted ball quality usually, and he's finally looking like himself again. Um, yeah, I hope this isn't kind of like, I hope his career doesn't stagnate right here because he is a in a system that does not have a whole lot of exciting bats. Despite being kind of old for his level, P-Mac is a very exciting bat to watch day in and day out. To high A Beloit, we go right-hander Josh Eknis. So he's the only guy recovering here that is ranked on our FOF top 30 prospects list. And Eknis comes in all the way to the bottom at number 30, though he'll probably move up at next time we update it because he continues to be dominant as a reliever in this organization. Just drafted last year in 2023, Outside of a uh, in day three of the draft, the twelfth round pick of the Marlins, Eknis now has a one point one nine ERA this year in thirty and a third innings pitched, and three of those four earned runs that he's allowed all year came in a single outing a full month ago. Outside of that, he's been pretty close to immaculate, starting off in Low A Jupiter before moving up to Beloit. Yeah, not much to uh, really say that the numbers don't speak for themselves. He misses a lot of bats. He has solid control for a guy with his type of stuff. Fastball averaging 97 miles per hour, and he gets it up to 99, 85 mile per hour slider. An infrequently used changeup. This guy being a relief only prospect, he's never going to go more than one time through an order. You don't need more than two pitches. So that fastball slider combo on its own, as long as he's getting ahead in counts, he's going to be really successful and move through this organization very quickly. He was just promoted to Beloit in May, and yeah, if he keeps his up, it would not be a surprise at all if he finishes the season in AA Pensacola for Josh Eknis. He's been working mostly high leverage situations, including closing out several games. It's been the interesting part of his usage is how often he's going multiple innings as well. Uh, in a handful of his times already this season, he's worked two full innings. Um including his most recent outing, he went two and a third. So that was a season high for him. Uh, so I enjoy, I like the usage. It's good to see that he has the stamina to do a couple up downs and still have success with Eknis. And I think he's very deservedly a top 30 prospect in this organization, even with the understanding that it's going to be a relief only profile. We finish off low A Jupiter right-hander Jake Brooks. He'd be up in bullet by now if he wasn't a starting pitcher. But the Marlins have an embarrassment of riches at the high A level right now. There's just not room for Brooks to be a starter up there. And it's been enjoying to, enjoyable to watch him because the uh, training wheels are off right here. It is unusual to see any sort of prospect average six innings per start over an extended sample. And that's what Brooks is doing this season including a seven-inning one-hitter on Sunday as part of a doubleheader. They just play seven and nine games. He went the distance and was nearly flawless by himself. Yeah, absolutely dominating at the uh, low A level, just like Eknis, a 2023 draft pick out of college. So he is, you could say, age-appropriate for that level. And he's, uh, he's ready for the next challenge whenever that opportunity presents itself. Very good control not overpowering stuff for him. It's a three pitch mix, but what's exciting is all three of those can get strikeouts. So it's a 91 mile per hour sinker, 81 mile per hour slider, 81 mile per hour changeup. All three of those can get whiffs because he is constantly ahead in the count and keeping guys guessing and off balance right there. Yep, just really encouraging to see the kind of leash that he's getting right now. If he keeps this up, he'll might throw a hundred and 30 innings over the course of this season. And that would point him to really have no restrictions whatsoever going into 2025. So not, not the uh, guy that we were really paying close attention to coming out of that draft class, but his performance certainly commands attention overall. That 2023 draft class on the pitching side has had a, a ton of really encouraging statistical performers in the minor leagues uh, so far. And uh, several of those guys deservedly moving fast through the organization Brooks will get his opportunity soon as long as he keeps this up. Kyle Tyler, Paul McIntosh, Josh Eknis, J. 
Jake Brooks. They are in our prospect spotlight this week. I'll be up. I'll be back with this again next Monday, barring another unforeseen emergency. We appreciate everybody following us along here on the small pod. I've been Eli Sussman here. Fish on First podcast presented by MPT College Consulting. Contact them today at mptcollegeconsulting.com to learn more about their services and schedule a free consultation. Thanks for your support. A ton of more content coming to Fish on First throughout this week, and we hope you stay current with all your Marlins coverage over there. Go Fish!